it's great to be here uh, with you this morning uh, introducing the Green Infrastructure Framework. Uh, many of you and your organisations have been on this journey with us, so thank you for all your support. Um, so yes, Jane and I are going to do a bit of a double act. Um, we are nat from Natural England, the government's advisor on the natural environment. Um, and as you may have noticed um, today, uh, we're also launching, the government is also launching the um, Environmental Improvement Plan. And there's some really great r support for this package of work in there. So I'm going to kick off uh, things by describing the framework to you um, and um, just going to uh, set out uh, why it's needed, uh, its aims, an overview of what's in it, uh, and then uh, our other presenters will build on this as we go through the morning. So what's the context here for the framework? Uh, as Tony's highlighted, 80% of people live in urban areas and the challenges of climate change, biodiversity loss and health inequalities are having significant impacts. And we've heard really clearly from both Tony and Minister Harrison about uh, green infrastructure's important role in tackling these. Added to this, we've got the rising cost of living, which means parks and green space um, are free, that are free to use are incredibly important. But there are inequalities in access to nature. And surprisingly, our research tells us that a third of us don't actually have access to good quality green space within 15 minutes walk from home. And green infrastructure is often not seen as an essential in designing new places to live. The value of parks and green space is often not taken into account in decision making and there are significant pressures on local authority budgets, especially for ongoing management. So these are some of the challenges that we set out to address in the framework. So uh, before we move on, uh, what do we mean by green infrastructure? Lots of definitions out there. This one's from the National Planning Policy Framework. It's great uh, and you can read it when we send around the slides, but I really love this uh, definition that a colleague once said to me, that green infrastructure is simply nature doing a job. I love that, nature doing its job. It's the everyday nature you see on the way to school, the office, the shops, your local park, your back garden. If you haven't got a back garden, uh, the planters outdoors, the road or rail verge, the wildlife areas, green roofs, green walls, blue infrastructure like canals, rivers, wetlands. And it's doing a job. Actually, nature's a great multitasker. It can metaphorically rub its tummy and pat its head at the same time. So there's a logic chain here, isn't there, around healthier, more resilient nature close to where people live, meaning healthier, more resilient places, helping us to adapt to and reduce climate change, leading to healthier, more resilient people and a healthier, more resilient economy. So we realised as part of the 25-year environment plan that we really needed a, a framework that would bring all of this together uh, with four clear aims. To improve existing and create more good quality green infrastructure for all its benefits. To ensure that everyone has access particularly in areas of low income and high health inequalities, and to support local authorities in the refresh of their local plans and to mainstream green infrastructure as a key asset in creating and, sustainable, uh, creating and maintaining sustainable and beautiful places. So the framework is designed for planners, for developers, for green space managers and for communities uh, and other sectors like health, transport, education, where green infrastructure can really help to deliver shared outcomes. So Natural England's got a, a clear, a strong interest in green infrastructure as part of that nature recovery network that Tony was talking about. A single national nature network that delivers benefits for people and wildlife. And that really reaches from right from the doorstep to that wider countryside. So with our partners, we set about thinking what impact the framework could have and what change we would really like to see if it was implemented. We want the impact to be that urban areas have more nature, more access to nature close to home, and more benefits from nature for climate, health and prosperity, with a strong Green in 15 ambition for everyone to have access to good quality green and blue space within 15 minutes walk from home, particularly where it's most needed. So what's in the framework? Here's a taster. Uh, the pictures are just thumbnails, so don't worry if you can't see those in detail to give a flavour of what's to come. 
But firstly, there are a few um, updated tools. So last year we launched the 15 principles of good green infrastructure and these have had a bit of a mini makeover. Uh, I won't go into the details of those today, but they are on the web portal. And then there's the Green Infrastructure Mapping Database, which last year won a Government Geography Award. And today we're launching the next version of this, version 1.2. It's got some really good stuff in it and Martin Moss will talk about that later. But brand new and shiny for today, and I do, I do feel like we need a bit of a, a trumpet fanfare for these actually. Um, there are the five headline uh, green infrastructure standards uh, and Jane's gonna talk about those in a moment. They're, they're really significant because they set standards we haven't had before on the quantity and quality of green infrastructure. Uh, also new for today is the Green Infrastructure Planning and Design Guide, a, a manual for all things green, as one of our directors has described it. And that'll help to put green infrastructure at the heart of mandatory local design codes. And, and Gra Gary Grant will talk about those in a moment. And finally, the process journeys, simple step-by-step -step guides on applying the framework. So essentially, we've got an urban greening toolkit, um, and I'm going to hand over to Jane now to talk us through the first of these new tools the green infrastructure standards. Thanks Claire and hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk through the green infrastructure standards and briefly cover the process journeys. So the standards aim to simplify and clarify what good green infrastructure looks like and how to plan it strategically. They're voluntary standards and they're based on best practice and evidence. We've developed them working closely with DEFRA and our cross-government steering group, our advisory group, and with universities and environmental consultancies, and we've tested them with local planning authorities and developers. So the standards are set out in an easy to use three level structure. At the top are the headline green infrastructure standards, and these are for green infrastructure partnerships to use to undertake initial assessments and develop a vision for green infrastructure and to set local green infrastructure targets. And these standards are led by government. The menu is a more comprehensive but carefully selected range of green infrastructure standards tools, best practice checklists and indicators. <clears throat> and these are owned by a number of different organisations. They can be used with the headline standards for more in-depth green infrastructure planning. And at the bottom is the signposting table, which is a spreadsheet that includes a wide range of these standards and tools to enable users to identify those that are most appropriate for their purpose. So today we're focusing in on the headline green infrastructure standards. This slide introduces the five headline green infrastructure standards and they include a green infrastructure strategy standard and then standards for accessible green space, urban nature recovery, urban greening factor and urban tree canopy cover. And each standard distinguishes between the recommended levels of achievement when, when they're applied at an area wide scale and for major developments. So I'll talk through the key points in each standard. They're set out in full on our GI website. The Green Infrastructure Strategy Standard supports the National Planning Policy Frameworks policy that local planning authorities should develop strategic policies for green infrastructure in their development plans. And the standard says that at an area-wide scale, local authorities, in partnership with their local communities, should produce both a green infrastructure strategy or its equivalent and a delivery plan that can apply the green infrastructure principles and standards locally. And the aim is that these strategies and plans set out how green infrastructure will help to create greener neighbourhoods with a thriving nature network that can reduce air and water pollution, support sustainable drainage and help places to adapt to climate change. And major developments should have a green infrastructure plan. We've updated the original accessible natural green space standards to include a broader range of accessible green spaces for their health and wellbeing benefits while still focusing on accessible natural green space and contact with nature. And the term green space here covers blue spaces as well. At an area-wide scale, the accessible green space standards say that as a minimum, everyone should have access to good quality green spaces within 15 minutes walk from home. And the standards also include size and distance criteria for larger types of green spaces such as district and country parks. In terms of capacity, there should be at least three hectares of green space per thousand population. 
and in terms of quality, we're delighted to include the criteria for the Green Flag Award, which is run by Keep Britain Tidy on behalf of the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities. And these criteria include accessibility for all to help ensure that everyone can benefit from green spaces. Then for major developments, the local authority specifies the accessible green space to be provided based on the standards. The Urban Nature Recovery Standard will help green infrastructure to contribute to the National Nature Recovery Network in urban areas and help local authorities to deliver their biodiversity duty, local nature recovery strategies and biodiversity net gain. And that says that in urban and urban fringe areas, the proportion of green infrastructure that's managed for nature recovery should be increased by a locally agreed percentage. And there should be an increase in the number and quality of local nature reserves and local wildlife sites. And for major developments, the developer identifies their contribution to nature recovery in their green infrastructure plan. So moving on to the urban greening factors standard, this aims to increase the level of greening and green infrastructure in developments and in urban environments more widely to improve their resilience, sustainability and biodiversity. And this standard says there should be at least 40% average green cover in urban residential neighbourhoods. For major developments, we've developed a new national urban greening factor, and this is a new type of planning tool, which Peter Neal will talk about a little later. And finally, the Urban Tree Canopy Cover Standard, which we've developed with the Forestry Commission, promotes an increase in tree cover for the many benefits that trees can provide in towns and cities. At an area-wide level, local authorities should measure their baseline tree canopy cover and then set a target to increase it by an agreed percentage. And the standard is in this form to respond to the wide variability of tree canopy cover in different places. Major developments should be designed to meet these tree canopy cover targets. We'll, provide, we'll also provide additional guidance, such as on planting the right trees in the right places and biosecurity. So to conclude, the headline GI standards are published today in a report on our Green Infrastructure website. So going on very briefly to the process journeys, these step-by-step -step best practice guides explain how different stakeholder groups can use the Green Infrastructure Framework and take a strategic approach in applying all the headline Green Infrastructure Standards, principles, etc. There are process journeys for local planning authorities, developers and design teams and neighbourhood planning groups. So looking forward over the next year, we'll be seeking feedback on the headline standards from stakeholders to see whether and how they should be adjusted to reflect emerging good practice. And we'll develop and publish the menu and signposting table with user guides and training videos and we'll provide updates through the GI website. So before finishing, uh, I'm delighted to introduce a short film by Alice Tree Park in Derby, an exciting project that's really starting to show how the accessible green space and urban nature recovery standards can help to create a large nature-rich green space in an urban setting. Thank you. <laughs>